right, thank you very much, everybody. Oh my God, love that the is crowd. Amazing, you. I see you. you. I see you over there. I see no, you. No, not over you. There. No, not you. I don't see you. No. I see the person next to you. Yeah. Jim, you're not even looking at the person I'm looking at. Look oh, that who's that? Over there. That person's amazing oh, too. Oh my Hi. God. You. I, oh my God. Thank you. Thank, thank you everybody. So thank everybody for coming out tonight. Oh, this settle is down. Amazing. Settle down. Settle down, crowd. Ooh. Settle, settle down. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> I did not expect this much love in this small of a space. No, no, not oh, all. Oh, things my granddad said. He's in jail. <laughs> People yeah, loving this. They're loving, loving this. They're loving this stuff. Uh, because they, they know what they came. They, they showed up to see Lost at Home do what Lost at Home does best. And that's they've the never seen this before either. We're no, live. Exactly. I said as seen. A I mean, here, fundraiser. yes. This is, this is great. I love actually seeing our listeners. It's a fundraiser. A, a fun fundraiser. It's a fun Fundraiser. Yes, yes. This is this like is a- like no, not like the things that emo kids play with. Not like fundraisers. <laughs> oh, oh. fund. <laughs> duh. Oh, razor. I see. I see. I see what you what no, you're we're saying. Do, we're doing good here. We're doing good here. Yes. This is a great show. I love the crowd. The energy is amazing. I know we haven't actually. Uh, usually it's just you and I feeding off each other. We get to feed off a whole. Crowd I am here. feeding off this crowd like a Cthulhu eating the Are souls of off? millions. Who wants their souls eaten? Oh, everyone. Oh, my God. Everyone. Listen to, listen to that applause. Everyone. Listen to that applause. Well, you would not think we would have sold out a packed out stadium like this. Yeah, that's wait, right. Wait, those words don't quite make sense. Packed out? <laughs> Yeah, well, well. Sold, sold a packed out or sold out a packed doesn't matter we're packed excited in, we're excited sold out packed out sold in we have done this show for 250th this episode. is this is the 250th you all are witnessing absolutely witnessing history in the making literally we are, are the first are, podcast to ever make it to 250 episodes well i was gonna say you're the first podcast listener to listen to this specific show and hear the number 250 be said that's true well <laughs> Well, no, I mean, we've said 250 in the last few shows we've been leading up to our 250th. So we've definitely said the number before. Fine. We're both wrong. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wins. Am I right, everybody? Am I right? Nobody Nobody wins. wins. Nobody wins. Hey, Jared, Jared, have you yes. seen the balcony? Have I, you seen the balcony I've crowd? Seen, I are you looking at the balcony? I have very bad eyes, but I'm, I I can tell that they're there. They are there. They, they're moving their arms. They got shitty seats. But you know what? They paid less for them. Yeah, yeah, you guys win. You guys win. Look at these fucking, uh, look at these rich jerks in the front. The 1%. Literally, What's that? if you're in the balcony, you're above the 1%. Time to whip, whip out your dicks. Yeah. Piss. 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 Nice. Oh, they're, uh, what oh, else they're doing. You ex- they're oh, doing they're, it. Oh, shit. They're literally doing it. We have legions of followers. We're like a <laughs> T- cult. Talk about trickle down. Whoa! Oh, that's a kind of Even the people in the front are laughing at that one. Holy shit. Yeah, they are. Their uh, faces. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> their faces <laughs> that we can see. Literally. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, so we're not just here to just, like, have fun with the crowd, although we're going to do that. Oh, we're going to do this all night we're long. All you in the balcony? Oh, yeah. You, oh, now no. they're jerking off. No, oh, they're, oh, oh, oh. Talk about, talk about trickle down. <laughs> What, what did you say? Say that again. Nope, but look at those people <laughs> in the front row, those one percenters. Guess what they've never been to, to before? Uh, a show where they got cummed on? A baby shower. Oh! My oh God. That's what they're experiencing right now. It's a baby shower. They're what jerking off of oh the one percenters head. Oh, this bitch getting pregnant. This bitch getting pregnant. <laughs> Y'all like bitch getting pregnant? <laughs> oh, shit. I just got racist. Oh, we lost a lot of people on that one. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, we only lost the left atrium yeah we're fine we're fine okay. we're fine i'm we sorry didn't, we didn't want those people here anyway nope. we we actually plan on closing off that room later tonight we and were passing it yeah we oh exactly i, I was so, actually i we mean we're going to murder those people which actually it's too bad for them yeah. they've left early it was going to be a third act for nobody to forget Can't take the heat get out of the gas chamber oh, oh, oh. No. episode 250 that's right episode well, 250. So everything podcast. goes we are actually uh recording this live from uh international waters as well so we can get away with any fucking thing we want Want our old pirate we radio took station over a maritime vessel. Yes, remember, like we were, uh, we used to do pirate radio. Yeah, this is nothing like that. We're not, not at all. We're on a Caribbean cruise. Yeah, and the, the captain's thing- dead. Yes, yes, he is. I'm your captain now. Remember that movie? I never saw it. Nope. But uh, good thing, <laughs> good thing, you are a captain who is not a flat earther because at least we won't drive you off the edge of the earth. I remember that from the episode. That one person 
knew the uh, n- knew the reference. He did. He did. Uh, we yeah. were, I'm choosing to ignore him. Uh, yeah, he knew. He knew that we I, had covered I, I that on him, a show before. I find him knowing that reference slightly racist. Um, the thing that I like about recording this in international waters, we can get away with anything we want, and that includes anything that we require to get your money. Get your money. No, including nobody. threatening killing puppies? Uh, we are going to... I will kill this puppy. <laughs> I have more than one. We actually have a lot of puppies and a lot of babies. Let me count them. One, two... You have two puppies. Well, this I mean, show's more than only one. an hour long. I mean, yeah. how many puppies can we kill in an hour? Well, if we do not... So we have a bunch of goals that we have to try to hit throughout the, throughout the show. Ah, shit. And if we... No, no. Pause. Pause in the show. Wait, um, you step on the puppy? No, one of them killed the other. Oh. Uh, we have one puppy. Well, we have one puppy to kill. We still. Here's the thing. I don't you know, think we're yeah, gonna have no, to. No, no, no. Half is uh, cup. Half is cup empty. <laughs> <laughs> you, we, we, uh, we, we. The cup you. is half full. That puppy that's alive, we can still kill. The puppy that's dead can become a humorous puppet animal for later in the oh, telethon. Two fifty. Come 250, on. Episode give 250, it up. Give us all your money. Yeah. So we are going to. Um, we're going to check in on our progress throughout. If we don't hit it by the end of the show, we are going to kill that one lone puppy. And the other one's already half empty. So wait. No, it's half full. Wait, no, it's dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's just a dead puppy. Um, so it we could be half full at any minute, though. I am in heat. Oh. International wait, Waters wait, wait, episode two fifty. Did, did you say it could be half empty or half full? Stop asking questions. It makes All more right. sense when you don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I think that that could just be the tagline for our entire two hundred fifty episode run. It'll make more sense if you don't ask questions. Yep. Um, so we, we have a phone number here to give out to yes. people who want to contribute to the show because the Lost No Podcast does not work on dead puppies. No. We definitely benefit from them, but it does not keep the lights on. It does not keep the microphones uh, erect. It does not purchase the puppies. It does not puppies. keep Jer erect. It we, does we not purchase... keep the table level that we are recording on. It no. does not keep these computer screens with a backlit LED. Uh, yes, yes. These are these are backlit LEDs? Yes. All right. Uh, we can't afford this kind of technology. Yes. Uh, we're, we're... No, it's got... They're front lit. They are... There's... <laughs> there's a flashlight... <laughs> With an old puppet show, so so it's an old school Kindle with a flashlight on it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's front exactly it. Computer screen. No, we we do, and we we have to buy puppies to to murder for other telethons. Yeah, that's going to yep. cost money. We buy these from the finest puppy mills. Um, granted, yep. they they burn more puppies than they sell, but. We want to make sure that we continue to give them our business, and you're going to help with that by calling this number, 669-221-6251. That's, once again, 669-221-6251. And call that, that number and support the show. And if you support the show and you give it a call, guess what? You're also going to be able to um, uh, ask a question. One of our uh, operators is standing by, and they will take your question and relay it to us. Uh, they will record we you, have, and we will answer you. We have, like, any old-school telethon. A bank of celebrity yes, telethon yeah, operators ready to take your call. We got For instance, we have... Delta Burke! Mm, I can take calls! Oh, and we got uh, over next to her, we have Paula Dean! Mm, I can take calls! And we got uh, over here on the left wing, we have Donnie Does Movies! Hey, how you doing, everybody? Whoa, Donnie Does Movies! And we got... Wait a minute, is that really him? We have Al Pacino here. Oi! And uh, who's over there? And, uh, oh my god, in the front row. Oh my god, in the front row, Christopher Walken. Wow, so good to be here. And uh, oh, and we got over here taking calls. Everybody knows the very famous, doesn't need no introduction, Mr. Chris Klingle himself, Santa Claus! Oh, 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 I don't know why I'm here. We, uh, we don't either, actually. We didn't invite you, but I, we really appreciate you coming in. I get lonely. Sometimes no one brings me presents. Aww. Well, I, that makes sense, and I'm, I'm, but we're really happy to have you here. You are definitely one of the biggest names on here. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, and uh, I, I see middle of the crowd. It's a little hard to see because he's sitting behind a pole. There looks to be a, a very young New Zealand boy. Oh, look. You mean, mate, I've gone here with money of my mates. I wasn't sure which one you meant here. Oh, are you talking to me? That's, uh, yeah, that's you. That's, uh, we're very glad to have you. Uh, you, uh, you I'm seem here with like you'd be famous. Yes, I'm here with my dad, uh, Peter Jackson. He's over here. 
Uh, is Peter Jackson next to me? He came to see the show in person. The little boy, do you think uh, Peter Jackson would actually like to say something, uh, you know, for uh, this one, uh, 250th episode? Sure, he doesn't. He's not on uh, camera much, but let me tell you something. Mr. Peter Jackson, would you like to say something? <laughs> These birds and birds, and sometimes I eat the kangaroo birds. Wow, you hear you you heard it here first. Chair. Hobbits. Chair, isn't that amazing? Get off! We have Peter. You Jackson. shall not pass. Uh, security. Uh, security. Security. Don't believe in nothing. Can we get, can we get Peter? <laughs> Security, um, we can't, we can't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. I didn't know this was going to happen. Sorry, boy. Well, um, uh, it looks like security is pulling, uh, Peter Jackson out of the, uh, the theater. So, uh, wow. Uh, it's actually good, because I would, I would be, uh, afraid if, uh, I'm not saying Bruce Bruce is going to make an appearance, but were he to, I'd be afraid of what he might do to Peter Jackson, actually. So, uh, we're glad that we got that out of the way. As you can see, that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to celebrities coming in here. Um, and, uh, the, the thing about celebrities is so many of these people that you've heard of here, uh, tonight, or that you've heard here tonight, you've heard of and you know very well, uh, but not everybody is as in front of the camera and as iconic as that, but you know them very well, and that's actually what our next interview is all about. We had, uh, uh our, uh, sister podcast, uh, which is a little bit more classy, NPR style, do an interview with, uh, uh, Jarvis Jenkins, who you may not recognize the name but you will definitely recognize the voice and the face so check out this interview with Jarvis Jenkins from our sister podcast check it out welcome to I know that actor a closer look a new series where we pick actors you all know but probably couldn't name these actors may have been in numerous movies you know and love but are never front and center however they are crucial components to every production they are in. Today, we start with a discussion with Jarvis Jenkins, an actor with a particular talent that will always be in demand. So, let's all take a closer look at Jarvis Jenkins. Thanks for having me on the show. Now, some people shy away from being typecast. You, on the other hand, have embraced it. I won't lie, there was a time when I was concerned about that. At first I was afraid I wouldn't be taken seriously as an actor if I took the same kind of role every time, but you know, after a while you gotta say to yourself, you know what, I'm gonna do this one thing and I'm gonna be the best at it. And it, in this case, is... Shouting whore. Um, I'm the guy that shouts whore and all those historical dramas, fantasy movies, it's a, any movie really that needs a good whore shouter. Hmm. How did you get your start in this niche side of the business? Well, a lot of people assume I must be a misogynist by nature. Um, to be honest, I had never actually used that term, uh, as intended at least, until I was auditioning for my very first role. And what role was that? I was up for a voice acting part in Toy Story 2. Funny, I don't recall a whore shouting scene in that picture. Oh, oh, Lord, no, no. Uh, they denied me the part. Uh, so I called John Lasseter a whore. And I pissed in all his ficus plants. Uh, it took me all day. Um, I was just in their office drinking and, and pissing for hours. And I mean, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm actually surprised I was able to find work after that that specific instance. But upon leaving, John took me aside and he told me he had a project I'd be perfect in. At first, I was thinking, well, I just got done pissing all over the place. Uh, this is probably some kind of water sports thing. I'm going to have to think this one over. You know, golden showers, things like that. Um, but uh, no, it turned out he, he was uh, interested in, in my horror shouting abilities. And a couple months later, I was filming American Witchcraft, uh, which had multiple scenes of me shouting horror at various witches as they're marched into the town square to be uh, ravaged by fire and whatnot. Um, and the, I mean, unfortunately, the film never got any distribution. It actually still has yet to be released. Um, I doubt at this point you'll probably end up seeing it, but uh, it made it into the right hands and it uh, cemented my career. Were you given any creative liberties? Not so much on American Witchcraft. Uh, I kept that, uh, how it was scripted, being my first paid movie role and all that. Uh, but I've dabbled with cunt, bitch, and chowderhead, things like that since. But it always comes back to horror in the end. But there is a notable gap in your career from 2001 through 2005. What was going on in your life during that period that found you taking a horror break? I was getting a little too full of myself, to be honest. Um... 
By 2001, I'd been in over 4,000 movies, TV shows, including all the voiceover uh, work that I was doing as well. And I started lending my talents to films that didn't explicitly ask for it. Um, they were films that I certainly thought could be improved by it, but I was never technically hired on, on these productions. And I found myself on various sets, and uh, I'd, I'd do the unexpected pop-on, you know, pop-in kind of thing. And the producers, well, they started getting a bit angry um, at this, and I was blacklisted for a few years until... Kind of, I could prove, uh, well, I, I essentially that I could behave and control myself again. Let's take a look at some of your work. Okay, we were soldiers, scene 52. Take one, Mel, in this scene. I need a lot from you, okay? This is gonna, gonna have to dig deep in this one. In this scene, Mel, you are moving the soldiers into the valley of the shadow of death. Very emotional scene. You're going to be tugging some heart strings. I want you to pull it all out of you, okay? We got we to gotta really feel this one, okay? You got that, Mel? Okay, I know you do. Of course, buddy. And action. In the 7th Cavalry, we got a captain from the Ukraine. Oi! Another from Puerto Rico. Oi! We've got Japanese, Oi! Chinese, Oi! Blacks, Orcs. Hispanics, Orcs. Cherokee Indians, Orcs. Jews and Gentiles, Orcs. all American. Orcs. Oh, for Christ's sake, cut! Who the hell? Who the hell was yelling whore in the background? Yeah, that was me, Randy. Jarvis, you're stepping all over Mel's lines. Whore doesn't uh, belong here. Well, here, uh, no, I just figured maybe I'd add a little pizzazz on this one, you know? No pizzazz, okay? No, no pizzazz in this scene. He's no moving pizzazz, the soldiers okay. into the valley of the shadows. That's for Christ's sake. No pizzazz, no whores. I get it. You want a boring scene. That's fine. No, get off my set. Get out of here. Jarvis, you're done. You're done. You're through, okay? Get out. Hmm. Wonderful. You know, the thing that really pissed me off about We Were Soldiers is I, I actually I did have a part in that movie. It just wasn't in that specific scene, but I thought like I'd add some pizzazz to an otherwise what I consider like an otherwise dull scene. But the director, uh, Randall Wallace, who directed that film, uh, he didn't see it that way and kind of got a little pissed at me and he cut my entire part, fired me, kicked me off the set that day. Your improv in that scene apparently set the production back by a full day, uh -huh. costing over three million dollars. Yes. Yeah, and if they had actually kept my part in, they could have recouped that ten times over at the box office. Honestly, I think you could really like feel the absence of whore in that movie. You watch it and you expect a solid whore at some point. Oh! Nope, nothing. Nothing. But luckily all that stuff is behind me and I'm back. Unfortunately, we are closing in on the end here, but before we go, I'd like to know what we can expect from Jarvis going uh, forward. Sure, sure. Um, I'm busier than ever these days, actually. Uh, you got platforms like Netflix, uh, Amazon, these streaming services that allow for a lot more adult themed content, where uh, a good whore here and there adds some uh, some good color. So, um, of course, oh, we got Game of Thrones, of course. I've appeared on that 42 times, and um, you know, that drives the popularity of fantasy themed stuff, and of course, that's very whore driven, uh, a very whore driven genre, if you will. So, I honestly, I don't see myself worrying about uh, not getting work anytime soon. I'm going to be working for a very long time. As long as you don't yell whore at any Disney princesses. Yeah, right, right. As long as I don't yell uh, whore at the princesses my god that was wow. really great wow I, am, I can everybody here is pretty psyched about I am that really as well. impressed yeah, um, yeah i think before we move on any further we need to talk to one of our sponsors because what is a uh telethon without making a little bit of money we gotta make money that's why we we're here we need to make money so let's uh let's listen to this you love that sound that sound has a taste that taste is the smoky smell of summer coming from your backyard Sometimes you want that feeling, sound, taste, and smell from a burger joint. You don't want $15 artisanal hipster bullshit. Fennel's got no right to be near a burger. What the fuck happened to a chunk of meat with some cheese on it? Sometimes you want something simple. But then, sometimes you get an itch that needs scratching. You ask yourself, what would a person taste like? Why is it so wrong to eat a dog? What kind of flavor would I get if I could eat a giraffe mixed with an orangutan? That's where Cronenburgers comes in. At Cronenburgers, all our ingredients are genetically modified beyond your wildest nightmares, fresh out of a Monsanto fever dream. Sure, any old restaurant can serve up some meat that's been genetically modified to last longer in the fridge or look pinker than meat should, but here at Cronenburgers, we have fun with the meat. 
Splice those tasty meat jeans with things we got no business splicing them with. Like, how about a pig smashed together in a cloning booth with a fly, then served to you alive on a bun what's got eyeballs on it? You don't know cuisine till you eat something that can stare back at you. And don't worry, it won't fly away. We plucked its little piggy wings off in a brutal display of man's power over whatever the fuck he wants to have power over, be it pig, fly, science, or God itself. Why not try our rabbit burger? It'll give you the shivers. Oh, this is... This is amazing. I don't know what's in it, but I do feel an insatiable bloodlust creeping through me that can only be quenched by consuming the flesh of my loved ones. Oh. I knew you'd like it, Percy. We got all types of burgers on the menu. Our Videodrome burger is so good, you'd swear you could taste it through the TV. That's because you can. It'll come get you right out of your TV. Not gonna lie, I was a little surprised at first when the burger grabbed me from my couch at home with little arms coming out of the two quarter pound patties with fresh American cheese on an oven fresh bun, but then it merged with my face and now I've got a vestigial burger twin, so I'll never be lonely. What's that burger twin? <laughs> All right, long live the new flesh. Uh, oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, this Scanner's Burger. This Scanner's Burger is so delicious. And for the more adventurous of you, call ahead and give us a sample of your DNA. We'll craft another of you using our patented flavor clone technology and carve you up into the meats of your choice so you can see what it's like to eat yourself. There's a new god in town, so come on down to Cronenberg's today. We have fun with the meat. Yeah, wow. Uh, big thanks to our sponsor. Uh, really appreciate it. We had Cronenbergers come on the show and yep. uh, definitely give us a little bit of the uh, the old ching here in the studio. That's it nice. Yes, keeps we, the lights on. We we don't want to have to ask people out there for all of the money necessary. So it is good we got the sponsors, but that does not cover everything. So we do appreciate you all calling in and uh, helping us out with some of this. And actually, I'm I'm getting a signal that says we. Actually, do have a call coming in right now. We're going to patch this person through. Hello, you have reached episode 250, the telethon from Lost at Home. Who am I speaking with? Oh, ho, ho. I'm Santa Claus. Um, I don't know if you that's You talked to me earlier. I'm manning a phone down here. Wait. Hi. Wait. I'm waving to you. Wait, wait. This, is, this line is supposed to be for people calling in to give us money. Are you are you calling to make a donation to the show, even though you're you've already? I'm been... on a phone. I thought I'd say <laughs> hi but to both of you, good boys. You could have just done a pop on. We would have been fine if you you're on the camera. You don't have to actually call in to do that. You know. What's a pop on? I give little boys and girls boppets. Is it oh, like a boppet? You still give boppets out. Do they still make those? I make boppets every year. No, your elves make boppets every year. I make things. Oh, what do you what do you make? What's your specialty? Scenes. Oh, like this one right here? Like you're making I a... make scenes in the workshop. Okay. I make scenes during interviews. I make boppets. Okay, so you make boppets and scenes. Am I correct? They're almost the same thing, little boy. They're n what do you... I have no idea what you mean. What are you doing here today? Is this a podcast? Uh, yes, you know that. You're, you, you're standing right there. You're, you're an supposed to be answering the phones, are by the way. Are you a greedy little boy? You do, do you realize... want money for Christmas? Uh, yes, and now, now we're tying up two lines that we could be... Uh, Look at all these lines lighting up that aren't getting through. That oh, this is my money. My cell phone is handling one of them. I have my voicemail and an outgoing message. What does it say? No, you haven't reached the telethon. I'm Santa. I knew it was a fucking mistake to have you here. You walked in and I was like, I don't want him here. And there you were. Well, I won't give you the venison you asked for this Christmas if you're going to be a dick to me. I asked for a trip to Venice. Not venison. What I have a lot of dead reindeer. <laughs> I need to get rid of the meat. Okay. I you know, don't know what to do with it. Uh, the, oh, oh, oh. Just, you know, go I'm back. I'm a bad salesman. Go back to answering the phone, Santa. We're done with you. We got to open the lines back it's up there. It's fine. My else. iPhone has a bad memory anyway. Like my wife. <laughs> There's no joke there. She's... Just senile. She's senile as a goat. Aww. Well, that is enough Santa Claus for one day. We are going to move this over 
to a very, very special exclusive we have. We're getting exclusives all over the place here. Uh, we are going to hear from yet another one of our uh, friendly, more news-centric. Uh, this one a little more on the entertainment side, little sister podcast projects. Um, this is actually something that our friends at MacTac Podcast uh, picked up for us and sent our way for this Lost at Home 250 exclusive. It, 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 takes, it, it, it takes you into a new realm for one of the most beloved action movies of all time. I can't give you any more detail. Yeah, fans of the cinema are really going to enjoy this. Take a listen, and thank you so much. This is going to be great. In 1987, the wildly popular buddy cop action comedy Lethal Weapon was released, catapulting an already famous Mel Gibson and Danny Glover into sheer superstardom. However, unbeknownst to most, the original casting choice of director Richard Donner, producer Joel Silver, and writer Shane Black was much different than the version we all saw on screen. Although fans of the now franchise know Gibson as Riggs and Glover as Murtaugh, an entirely different duo was initially cast, specifically the best-selling duo of Daryl Hall and John Oates. At the time, attempting to transition their string of number one hits onto the silver screen. Despite a trailer and proof of concept being produced, the idea was ultimately traded for the version we've all come to know and love. Presenting for the first time, the original trailer version of Lethal Weapon, starring the blue-eyed soul legends Hall and Oates. He is a criminal's worst nightmare. A cop who enjoys the danger. You need to step down from this investigation. I can't go for that, Sarge. That's an order. No! No can do! He was ready to retire. Now, he's gonna wish he had. <gasps> Good! John, meet your new partner. Ugh, I'm getting two oats for this shit. If these guys can just stand each other, you're out of touch! I'm out of time! The bad guys don't stand a chance. <laughs> what you want is adult education! Why do you risk your life like this? You're a family man! Listen, some things are better left unsaid! Say it isn't so, John! Sarah! Smile. She's a rich girl! Whoa, whoa, whoa! She's a man eater. She's gone! Watch out, boys! She'll chew you up. This fall, Daryl Hall and John Oates in Private Eyes. We're watching you. All right, now we have a special guest. We teased this uh, special celebrity guest before. This is one of the very earliest guests we had on Lost Out Podcast, and we are happy to welcome him back. Uh, we're actually going to head over to our satellite feed booth, and we're going to sit down and chat with Mr. Darren Ewing, calling in all the way, all the way from the great state of Utah. Let's talk to Darren. Thanks for having me on, guys. Pleasure to be here in a Lost at Home podcast. I'm so excited. I'm tingling all over. Oh my god, I like to hear that. That's awesome. <laughs> and I, I should I should let everybody know you've already offered to send us pictures of your junk. So uh... yeah, yep, yep, yep. Well, all junk jokes aside, you are here to help us this week with our major telethon. You brought an exclusive Dizzy DeSoto song. It's uh, an exclusive. Uh, that is great news. We are big fans of the music you do. You've been a hero of ours from working in Troll 2 to the music you do, and we're happy to have you here this week. <laughs> so without further ado, here is Darren Ewing, Dizzy DeSoto. The song is Jessica Alba, Cut My Hair. I couldn't say it better if I tried to. You, <laughs> you hit the nail right on the head. Jessica Alba cut my hair And if it looks bad, well, I don't care Cause Jessica Alba cut my hair today And I've got another appointment in three days I was sitting in my local barber shop Shop, shop, shop Eating my complimentary lollipop Pop, 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 pop I 
heard a boy say, dear, and I'm ready for you. You, you, you. When I woke up, I knew that it was Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba cut my hair. And if it looks bad, well, I don't care. Cause Jessica Alba cut my hair today. And I've got another appointment in three days. Came out looking like a dork, dork, a big dork. Looks like she cut it with a spork, spork, a big spork. I still have hairspray on my collar, 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 collar. I think I tipped her $57. Actually, it was $58. But I don't mind, because it was just like a freaking Alba. Well, Jessica Alba cut my hair And if it looks bad, well, I don't care Cause Jessica Alba cut my hair today And I've got another appointment in three days And I've got another appointment in three days And I've got another appointment Oh wait, that was Thursday In two days Amazing, amazing. So good to hear from our good pal, Darren Ewing. You all know him from Troll 2, of course. Um, we, you know, we've done uh, Horror in the Court Woo! stuff with him uh, in the past, so it was really good. It's been a while since we've actually had uh, a face-to-face -face conversation with him, right. and I guess in this case it was actually a phone call and a, a separate thing anyway, but still, really nice to hear from our good buddy. Do you all hear? You all like hearing from Darren? Yeah, I know you did. Yeah, you're awesome. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Darren, once again for calling in. That was great. Now, uh, I think what we're going to do right now is take, what, another call? I is think... That, is that how telethons work? Yeah. Wait, I, is that how telethons work? We need work? to take calls to get money, from what I understand. Wait, I want to hear yeah. from the audience. Is that how telethons work? I don't know, maybe. They all said no, but oh, it wow. is, actually. That was, that I don't was think these people, weird. Yeah, I don't they, think these people they, watch telethons. I think that's the uh, the catering service over there, and they were not paid. No. They're pretty angry. Yeah. Uh, they're taking the scones. They're well, taking the fucking scones. Yeah, here's the thing. Uh, t folks... We can't pay you unless we get paid. That's why we have to take these calls. All right, let's let's take. Yeah, a call. you you you. Hey, craft service. Hey, you get paid when we get paid. That's right. That's right, how the, that's a, how the world works. Taking a hard line with those caterers. All right, that's so right. we have another call coming in. Hello, hello. Is this is this is this a, a, a telephone? Yeah, this is a, a telephone. Hello, hello. Who hello. is this? Who is this? Telephone. This is uh, this is me, Mrs. Moran. Is it Bruce? Wait. 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 Is Do you this know what any relation to Bruce Bruce Moran? Uh, yes, actually, I was calling about Bruce Bruce. It's been a long time since I've heard from him, and he, uh, I'm his grandmother, and he's supposed to come home from for uh, 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 Christmas, Australian Christmas, where he carved the ceremonial uh, uh, Duckaroo, Chango Duckaroo, where he. Uh, hold on a second, I've got me pills here that help me. Think better. Um, okay, so we have, uh, oh, no, no, we have... That was ecstasy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, she's that was... She's still talking. That was ecstasy. I'm just wondering what is happening to my my buddy Bruce, Bruce, my little man. Hey, Rob, turn that down. I can't hear the nice man here. Sorry about that. Because he, he hasn't been around for a while, and I would like to know what's going on with him, and you guys seem to get in touch with him quite a bit. This is Grandma. I thought he was in his well, room. Well, uh... Grandma, Bruce, 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 is that you? No, no, it is absolutely not. This is Scott from the uh, Lost and Known podcast. Wait, uh, we wait. do have a uh, we do have a thing with Bruce Bruce here uh, that uh, may okay. unveil a little bit of your. Uh, well, this might fix a little bit of the mystery around him that you you say you haven't seen him in a while. Uh, this is right. This might be the perfect opportunity to reintroduce your grandson to you, Mrs. Moran. Is he got my beers yet? So do I, do I hang up or? You just, just keep listening. You can stay on the line all you want. Um, you can actually just stay on the line. I've got to stay on the line, then. Then uh, let's hear a little bit from Bruce Bruce Moran. Okay. It does it start right now, then? It, it does. It does. It starts as soon as you stop talking. I've got to stop talking, then. Then, yeah, as now? soon as you stop. Harold, he says I've got to stop talking for it. So you've got to keep what, it down in the background. You keep shouting. Hold on a second. And it's not gonna. We're not gonna hear from my baby. As soon as you stop to? talking, it will start. Is he All right, I'm stopping now. All right, perfect. Well, we're ready to play quiet. Bruce Bruce Moran. Very Ooh, good. But Excellent. You need you need to stop talking so we can actually play out. Okay then. We need a moment of silence for the uh, the computer program to know when to interject the audio. So ready? Here. 
how long's the moment then? That's it's could want you with a nice beard here. Once again, we need a moment Not silence. longer than that then? Let's give a two, three. It's got teeth size amounts. Testing, T testing, testing. Oh, I think it's working again. Oh, thank God. Hello again, outside world. Our communications went down for a while, so uh, I hope you all weren't too worried about us. There was a big electrical surge, and all the power went down. Things were so scary, oh, I was out taking another piss when it happened, and I could hear Bruce Bruce calling out to me, but he didn't hear my shouts back, apparently. Yes, yes, so your voice is like a feather in the wind because you have no testicles. Oh, I told you that in private. They were lost in the war. Well, well, you lost them in a game of Call of Duty. Which is a game about war. Well, never mind that. We're back online here, and we're about to confront the airplanes. Jason, you go first. Me? Well, they know you. They'll be less likely to ravage you. Also, you aren't threatening, in large part, because of your lack of testicles. All right, then. Huh? Jason. Oh, how pleasant to see you again. I trust you in... <laughs> ...have been happy. Where's my sweet daughter? Oh, she's dead. T tired She's dead tired, yes. <laughs> oh, all these two have been shagging like animals for days, so she can't walk. Her pussy broke. Oh, yes, that does sound like... <laughs> well, please come in. And who is your friend here? Well, this is Bruce Bruce. Hello, then. Well, Bruce Bruce... Any friend of Jason's is a friend of mine. Please, won't you join us for tea? It's made from rat urine and old shrubs. Uh, no, no, I'm allergic to tea, but um, I'm sure Jason would love a cup. No, I'd rather... Uh, Jason, you don't want to be rude to our host here. Drink the piss tea. Bottoms up. Cheerio. Well, I don't want to be rude, but we've actually been trying to get out of here for quite some time to no avail. We can't seem to find a way out. Why didn't you just use one of the doors nearby? They're all over the place around here. There's one right there. Oh, yes, the Excite doors. I saw those all over the place, but I said, oh, I've had plenty of excitement for one day. Thank you very much. Not for me, I says. Uh, all right, wait a minute. Uh, Jason Jr., those are Exit doors. In Britain, we say Excite. No, you don't. Those are two completely different words. You're just illiterate. Well, naturally. So you've seen these doors all over the place while we weren't together, and you never bothered to point one out to me? You seem so on edge. I says to myself, Jason, I says, why would Bruce Bruce care for any more excitement than he already has to deal with? Give the poor man a rest, I says. I miss Thanksgiving. I miss Christmas. I even missed Australian Christmas, where I was supposed to carve the ceremonial koala duckaroo, the traditional Australian Christmas bill consisting of a chicken stuffed into a duck, stuffed into a koala, stuffed into a kangaroo, stuffed into a much larger kangaroo-sized chicken. Did somebody say crocodile? Oh, Hogan! He's still alive? I was just in the area, and I thought I sensed another horsey in trouble. Need a hand, mate? Oh, yes, sir. We sure could. Not you, you toink pommy. Go drink some tea with milk from Theresa May's teat in a rainy day while you ignorantly misunderstand the EU's necessary role in your future and vote yourself out of relevance. Well, wow, Paul Hogan, you're so political. You're also not dead. I might be less than alive, but I'm more than not dead. Would you like to lift away from this place, Bruce Bruce? Well, I can't leave my friend Jason Jr. behind. No worries, Bruce. I'll just take an excite door to the street and catch a cab back home to England. I guess we can go back to Australia then, Paul Hogan. I'm the Prime Minister now. Well then, Mr. Prime Minister, next stop, Sydney. Prime Minister Paul Hogan, away! Oh, Bruce Bruce. 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 Oh, Bruce, Bruce. Wake up, Bruce. What? What? In the name of Jason? Where in bloody hell are we? We're out in the car, of course. You fell asleep while I was filling the car up with petrol. You mean, it was just a dream? What was a dream? You're confusing me, Bruce. I had, I had this crazy dream. You were there, and you fucked a airplane. Airwolf. Yes, Airwolf. And Paul Hogan flew me home, but he was the Prime Minister. Well, that's just silly. It was clearly just a dream. You're tired from all this travel we've been doing, trying to ride cross-country for our new podcast and all. Oh, well, maybe, but... Then how was I dictating all of this and airing it on Lost at Home Podcast? Well, I don't know what you've been talking about, but we do have this long trip ahead of us. Perhaps I should drive. Yes, I guess perhaps. 
Uh, let's see here. Maybe a little Australian radio to calm me down. <laughs> and they promised they would increase charges on the kangaroo. Now, in political news, running on a platform of continuing massive mathematics programs cuts across Australia in a stunning turn of events, Paul Hogan has been elected Prime Minister by a staggering margin of 95 to 7. What's the big dog ding dong? Whoa. Well, you can say that again. <laughs> wow, now that was a harrowing I story. I cannot believe that. I'm, uh, I, I was on the edge of my seat for weeks hoping that these two fine people who were both contributors to our show Absolutely. would make their way out and to safety because, honestly, I'd like to have them back on the show again. And, and we've been hearing from them for so long that it was so great to hear that they were fine. And you know what? We actually have a bigger surprise for everybody here than just the finale. We actually got Bruce Bruce and Jason Jr. to come on the show here. Would y'all like to hear from them? Yeah, I knew you would. All right, let's welcome Bruce Bruce and Jason Jr. to the show. Hello there. Hello, nice to see you. I love you Hello. Bruce, Bruce. Oh, oh, it's very nice. I love you too. Hi, oh, there's my fan. Oh, he's waving uh, so hard at me. Hi, fan. Yeah. Yes, you've got that one. He's oh, oh he looks a little twinky, doesn't he? Ah, oh, well. All right. Oh, I don't know what that means. I'll make you suck in my fucking cack. Oh, you'll suck at my fucking cat. All right, now that we've uh, got both of you seated here on the yes, stage, yes, uh, yes. for all the listeners out there in telethon land, ready to give the Lost Known Podcast a lot of their hard-earned money to keep the lights on here in the studio, we want to entertain them a little bit with a little back and forth. Uh, Bruce, I yes. think we're going to start with you. All right, got, then. Got a quick question for you. Okay. With all the time you were down there in that bunker, yes. with little, little annoying... A little annoying Brit here. Yes, yes, Jason Jr. you're talking uh, about. Yeah, um, how did you find the time to wank? Well, I actually, the thing about me, I'm, I'm what they call a, a very open wanker, which in 2019, uh, as it is now, but 2018 and 2019 is, uh, it, uh, apparently you're not supposed to do that as much anymore. I just wank uh, whenever I feel like it on the bus, in front of, so waking in front of him, uh, actually uh, had uh, no problems whatsoever. He, well, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't a disturbance? His annoyingness didn't make you flaccid? Uh, no, no, actually, uh, if anything, it helped, because uh, he's so womanly in his appearance, so sometimes I'll just picture him with bosoms and stare uh, deep into his eyes, and uh, I would uh, well, I don't take like care of that. The, I don't like where this is going. Well, yeah, well actually, I'm, I'm glad you chimed in, Jason, because um, I, I was just going to be curious well, about I, how I that make you to. feel. That, that, well, like he's a predator. Not the cool kind with the laser eyes and shoulder th heat vision. Well, J Jason Jr., do you, did you feel like a victim? Oh, now? Now I did. I asked back in the day. I just I thought he was being friendly. Because, uh, Bruce Be Bruce. Real friendly. I hate to I hate to say this, but Bruce Bruce, um, we actually, this is, is, is sort of serves double duty. Because Jason Jr. actually came to us ahead of time and told us that this made him uncomfortable. And I'm afraid this is your Me Too moment! <laughs> oh, no, I've been Me Too'd. Yeah, we got an exclusive here on the Lost Known Podcast. Bruce Bruce Moran oh, got me too You got me too And just you got me too Wait, let's show of hands. Anyone in the audience? Anyone else get me too oh, wow. uh, Jason that's Jr. Actually, that's actually yeah, frightening. Jason, There's a lot of them. But. Jason Jr. is just waving his hand about as hard as he yeah, was when yeah. he was... Uh, yeah, oh. and, and his little friend is the one the one I'm fan. Take you, Jason Jr. I'm that guy, put my body all over your body, uh, Jason Jr. You're gonna suck my fucking cock tonight, Jason. Jr. Okay, I'm gonna keep you in apparently. My um, well, yeah. well, I mean that that's uh, I mean unfortunately that's all the time we have to talk to you guys, and I'm sorry, Bruce Bruce, to drop that bombshell on you, but people love that kind of stuff, reality show style hey, style we just stuff. Got a scoop. That yeah, was an exclusive. That, that was that was an exclusive scoop. Uh, and you know, don't worry, Bruce, we're still gonna gonna chat with you and all that kind of stuff. We actually have a bit uh, that you actually brought to the show. Um, I guess. Uh, you and uh, Scott had a chance to sit down for this little game show thing. We, we did. Yes, yes, it was. Um, uh, this is uh, Didgeridoo of Vibrator. And uh, uh, thinking back on me getting me too, maybe it's not the uh, timeliest of, uh, of, of topics to be going into. So maybe you don't want to play that? Nope, nope. You gave us the clip, so we're just going to go ahead and roll that. All right, all right, everybody. Welcome to my new game, Didgeridoo of Vibrator. Now, the point of this game is I'm going to go ahead and give my friend Scott here. Hello, Scott. Hey, thanks for having me on. This oh, is, absolutely. Uh, this is amazing. So this is a new game I invented where I'm going to give you a sound. Okay, right? any sound? Uh, no, it's going to be one of two things. Possibly, uh, I might throw a curveball in there, but it's going to be What's either... a curveball sound like? 
All right, I'll know to look for that one now. <laughs> yep. Ah, uh, you just played your hand. <laughs> yes, that's right. What, but uh, what you're going to be here listening for is either a didgeridoo sound, okay, or a vibrator, because they sound eerily similar. And uh, nice, so nice uh, choice of words, eerily. Yes, yes. Well, you know, because they're not the same thing, so it's eerie. I'm explaining it now, so I've totally taken any charm out of that little uh, that little bit of nice word that I chose. But uh, anyway, so I'm going to start out. With, so I'm going to give you a sound. And uh, give you a little bit of time on the clock, a couple of seconds, and you have to answer whether you think this is a didgeridoo uh, or a vibrator. Now, there might be other sounds chiming in there, you know, like to maybe give you a little context of what's going on. It might give you a little hint. So, just, uh, let's go ahead and... Can, uh, I, can yeah. I get an example? Uh, yes. Uh, here's one right here. And that is a uh, didgeridoo. And uh, and here's here's one here. That's a vibrator. See? Okay, okay. I so can hear, I, hear, I, the, I can hear the, the slight difference. Yep, yep. yep. But you can you can tell, you know, a lot of people get these mixed up. They hear somebody playing didgeridoo upstairs, and they're like, turn down the vibrator, you know? And somebody's using the vibrator, and they go, yeah, turn down the vibrator. <laughs> Either way, they always think it's a vibrator, because it vibrates the floor. So, are you ready to start? Let's go. I, I am 100% on board. What are we playing for, by the way? Is this uh, the proceeds of this game going to the Lost at Home Telethon? Uh, yes, actually. The, the proceeds of this is going to the Lost at Home Telethon, which is being used to pay me for uh. doing this game. It's a, it's a little tax circle I've got, and then it goes into an offshore fund where uh, government can never touch it. Not you, Australian government. Not you, American government. It's all mine. I earned it. I'd so, like to yes. say this is a bombshell for the Lost and Home podcast, but it's not. This is how you fund your princess cruises that we're all familiar yes, with. Yes, those are a scam as well. Uh, you got to cut that right. Oh, I'm the I'm the editor. I don't know how to use this stuff. I'll try to cut it. Is it? Is that it? I think I'll cut it. You'll know, keep keep it in. Keep it in. No I, one listens anyway. I, I, I think I cut it. I, I think I think it's out. So, um, anyways, uh, so uh, uh, if you're ready to start, I'm gonna go ahead and play the first vibrator. One okay. Uh, no, you've got to wait till the sound. Oh, oh, I thought I heard it. No, that's me talking. Okay, okay. Let's, all, right. Let's, all right, ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. All right, here we go. I'm excited. Vibrator. Ah, yes, you're correct, actually. That was me using a vibrator on myself, actually, while I was trapped in the uh, the bunker. That's part of the, uh, the things that I didn't uh, actually give to you guys. Is I found a vibrator down there from World War II. It was a hand-cranked one. What you did is you hand cranked it and then it would spin around like crazy. May have just been an egg beater, but I used it as a vibrator. So you were correct on number one. Good for you. Well, all right, you got that first one correct. I'm very proud of you. I hope that maybe stay in our role like this. Ready I'm, feel for I'm feeling good. I'm feeling right. good. Here we go. Ready for the next one. Here it is. Give the poor man a rest, I says. Didgeridoo. Ah, afraid that was also a vibrator. It was actually the same exact sound of me using the egg beater on my bottom, and uh, with just a slight little difference in that uh, in that you could hear Jason Jr. coming in and catching me in the act. So maybe you thought like he thought I was playing the didgeridoo with something like that, but it's not the case. So I'm afraid you got one. You're one in one now. Yeah, we're gonna right, keep going. I'm in the game. I'm in the game. Right. I'm in the game. Let's check this one out. Didgeridoo with vibrator. Now, okay, now I know that sound anywhere. That is Jeremiah's mom's vibrator. Ah, no, that's Jeremiah's mom. Didgeridoo. Yes. Are you? Okay, okay. I've slept over at his house before when I was a kid. I I can yes. see the well, difference I, in sound now. I, yep. I, I talked to yep. him, and, and he said that uh, actually that she was a very uh, well-received didgeridoo player. She does also use her vibrator quite a bit, so I can I can see she and I bet you she probably used both when uh, she you were at the house. So it's hard for you to tell the difference between them. All right, so no no problems here. One and two. We're going to give you another one here. Didgeridoo or vibrator? Oh, easy. This this is a come on vibrator. Yeah. Well, uh, yes and no. Actually, it's a chipmunk using a vibrator, but the person's using the chipmunk as a vibrator. So I'm gonna say yes, it's a vibrator. Wow, I'm doing a mental picture right now. So it's like a, like a golf club koozie. Yes. That's the chipmunk. Yes. On the vibrator. Yes. And the whole thing's going up inside. And the whole thing's going up inside. So it's it's whether or not I guess either way. You know, you know, there's I, a vibrator in there, so I'm I'm gonna give you that one. You know, I can hear it now. Because it's not vibrator didgeridoo or chipmunk. You know. My bad. My bad. Yeah. I, I I can hear it. I'm now. still gonna give you the point. I believe you're two and two here. All right. All right. All right. Next up. Did you redo a vibrator? Let me know which it is. That is. It's a tough oh, one. oh, okay, okay. 
That is Elvira coming on the corner of a washing machine. Oh my goodness! Yes, but I, I would. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Using a didgeridoo. That's right. Yes. So uh, in that case, you wow, you pinpointed that one. That's amazing. Well, I don't even know how we did or will get that sound. Cannot believe that. Um. So next up, yeah, let's just keep moving along here. Uh, didgeridoo or vibrator? Oh, don't hear me already near there. Don't be shy. Put it up in my ears there. Oh, vibrator, easy. Ah. Here's the thing, I might have to give you partial credit, because this is a trick question, this is that curveball I was talking about. This is both. This is actually somebody using a didgeridoo as a vibrator, and I was playing it, the person was playing it inside the woman's pussy. So wait, it was vibrating. Wait, wouldn't you just inflate yourself? Uh, well, it didn't end very well. <laughs> yeah, the okay, police, okay, fair enough. Uh, there's still, if you were to play the sound effect longer, would I hear a pop at the end? I'm, I'm not, um, yes, I'm afraid I'm not allowed back in Denmark, because, uh... <laughs> The police are looking for me, and luckily, uh, Australia does not have an extradition policy with them. I uh, didn't check the United States, so I might be in a little bit of shit now. Luckily, this is airing after I'm back in Australia, so hopefully we're fine. We've got to keep moving along, pretend that didn't happen. All right, um, here we go. Last question. Didgeridoo or vibrator? Ooh. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. That's I, that's my vibrator. I'm turning it off. Uh, no, hold, on, hold, on, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. I was getting something from that. Oh, right, hold on. All right, now let me. Can I hear it again? Yes. Okay. One more time, yeah. There you go. Oh. Oh, I got this one. Okay. Yes. Underwater vibrator. Wow. You know you vibrate, don't you? Yes. This is actually uh, and I actually good thing you mentioned that in a little bit of a setup. That is a uh, a uh, uh, Aqu Aquarius Atlantisian. Vibrator, brought to you by Atlantis Vibrator Company, who is now a sponsor, actually, of this uh, little segment. So I just want to shout out to Atlantis Vibrators, Poseidon, more like Pussyidon. They have a very bad marketing department, working with them on that one. But I uh, would like to say thanks to our sponsor, and thanks to you, Scott Bear, for uh, for checking out and, and being on, on my little bit. Absolutely, I'm uh, glad to be here. Thank you for the parting gift, too, a uh, Atlantis vibrator. I, I I will definitely bring this home. And, I saw uh, try you using it earlier. I, I could tell you liked it. Well, I mean, I, I, their slogan's so good. I mean, have you tried it oh, yet? It's just, well, yes, see, that was actually where the marketing department uh, improved yeah. after the one that I said the first time, which was terrible. I mean, I see something, I see any product where it's sea-based, and they say, have you tried it yet? Yes. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try that. Yes, yes, you tried, well, you've, it's worn out its welcome now that you've said it so many times, but... I'm glad you like it. And, hey, uh, hey, yes. Trident's have three holes, or three prongs. Yes. I got three holes. That's right, yes. yes and this one, is this Wait, uh, do I have three holes? I have like 19 holes if you count ears, nose. Yes. How many <laughs> nostrils and ears do you have? Because I'm doing the math. I didn't count the mouth. I didn't count the urethra. Okay, the, the yes. The anus. Yes. Um, the well, be belly button well, on I a assumed, bad day. I, I assumed you, you counted the, the anus and you were counting... Ears, urethra. eyes, nose, mouth, anus, urethra, belly button on a bad day. Okay, so... I think that's up to, like, what, eight? Nineteen. Teen. That was nineteen there. <laughs> you were correct. So thanks uh, thanks again. I hope you enjoy your uh, your Atlantis uh, Vibrator Company Vibrator uh, with three prongs. And I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, that doesn't work. Thank you again to Bruce Bruce. That was a fun game we sat down and played the other day in his I, private it studio. Yeah, um, it was fun. I, like, I came away with a great prize. I, I was going to say, I, I played uh, I played along as a listener um, during it, and I actually I did worse than you, so I am actually very impressed you got a couple of those. I also got the Elvira one correct, though. So, nice, very yeah. nice. And the uh, the prize I got, uh, very few people know this, but if you take a KitchenAid, you can attach it as an attachment, mm. three rotating, like, vibrating dildos yeah, yeah. that then spin on the KitchenAid, you can make pizza three times faster. The dough, it just needs it, and it needs it, just and like, it needs just it. Just like I need two tridents. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, we don't make the slogans. Uh, they fuck make, you. They make themselves. Fuck you. I didn't come up with that. It's not my joke. Jesus. Fucking rowdy crowd. Anyway, um, you know, uh, well, here's the, t the point of the show. You know, we're, we're all the way at the end, and we've really had a great time sitting down with all of you. But here's the unveiling. We've had these phone lines open the entire time. Scott, how, how, what do you say we take a look at what we've made? Let's see on the big board what All we right. made. Drum roll. Negative 
Forty-seven dollars. How? How? Wait. How? It, wait. It wasn't even programmed to go into negatives. It should have at least stayed zero. Who gave away forty-seven dollars? How? Wait. Who? Santa, I'm looking at you, but I don't, I don't know. You know. Oh, what? he's doing that naughty thing where he puts the one finger on his lip and kind of smiles coyly. Yeah, it doesn't work when you're a fucking 1600 year old old man in a workshop in the North Pole, buddy. All right. Uh, Possibly a pedophile. We, we have it. Okay, with. so we fell ten thousand forty-seven dollars short of our goal, um, and um, for whoever we promised forty-seven dollars to, I guess we'll get it out in the mail. Um, and it's kind of a bummer, but uh, we had a great time regardless. Yeah, this was a good show. Um, I'm glad uh, people called in. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad that everyone showed up here for our Sound Studios first, you know, inaugural show. Yep, yep. We, we had uh, we had a lot of fun with Bruce Bruce. want to say thanks to Bruce Bruce, Jason Jr., um, Kyle Brock. You, you helped us out a ton. Darren really Ewing. You. Darren yes. Ewing. You, you Always just, great to talk to you. Oh, my God. All the way to the moon yeah, with you. I don't want these motherfucking snakes on these motherfucking planes. Uh, Darren Ewing. Classic yeah. lines. You know, you know all, all those best ofs. Um, from memes and gifts. We we had a Granny Moran. Thank you for calling. From in memes and, and gifts. Yes. Uh, all those Granny Moran memes and gifts. Yes, we we've got taking of- the nation by storm this past winter like a snowstorm. Yeah, we we've had a lot of those up here. I want to thank the snow and Mother Nature for giving us all this beautiful white powder. I want to um, thank the uh, the lady the other day who I said winter sucks, and she says ah, it's just extra insulation. And I said you wouldn't need it if it wasn't winter. Yeah, yeah, because you're a fat cunt. That's right. <laughs> to that fat cunt who gave you some shit and tried to make a joke and make your day better, she can fucking fuck herself. I want to say thank you to you. I want to say thanks to the sound guy again. J- I probably already said that. Jason Jr.'s one fan. Jason yes. Jr.'s one. Oh, he's still waving. I yes. think that I might be a condition. That's a condition, actually. He's yeah. not stopped waving. That I might be like a rare form of like early onset Parkinson's. Yes, all the dwarfs for, that we've uh, tossed during the show, uh, we weren't able to air the dwarf tossing bit. We're sorry, uh, Franklin, uh, that you uh, are, are now paralyzed. But you know what? Uh, you signed up for it. And, uh, oh, and yeah. T- to the werewolves. And That's right. the airwolves. The werewolves and airwolves. Wereplanes, the... airwolves, and werewolves, and planes, and all you snakes, planes, and snakes, and planes, and automobiles. Hiding in that secret bunker underneath uh, Arizona, Nevada, Mexico. We are actually not even sure. To all the people who tried to call in, to, and, and to the person that we gave you $47 to, or thanks, thanks you called in. Um, I don't know how we issued that refund for I, you. I, I'd uh, like to thank a few people, too. I'd like to thank uh, my cat, yep. Nigel. Um, I'd like to thank Satan. Yeah, Satan's good. Um, I would like to say thanks to Satan as well. Hail, hail Satan. Um, I'd like to thank uh, that stick of deodorant and that beer. Uh, excellent. I'm pointing at things on the stage now. Daryl Hall with John Oates. Uh, couldn't do this without you. Cronenbergers, you helped us out a lot. Jarvis Jen- Jenkins. That chair um, right amazing. there. That chair that no one sat in for the entire show. You're, you're, you're my rock. You're my rock. You're my rock. Yes. It's people, actually a rock. Who brought a rock into the studio? Well, rocks can be chairs. It's big enough to sit on. Don't say they can't be. All rocks are big enough to sit on, technically. Some, sometimes, you know, a chair wants to be a rock, a rock wants to be a chair. Hey, it's 2019. You can be whatever you want exactly. to be. Chairs and rocks. And we're so glad you all could bring 2019 into with us. And uh, I guess until next time... Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. Come on, everybody. Get lost. You get lost. Get lost. And you get lost. Get lost. And you get lost. Get lost. And you get lost. Get lost. Get lost. And you? Get you right lost. there? You right there in the middle of the crowd with a sexy little smile? A little red lipstick? That's Jason the, Jr.'s. The, the lazy eye? Jason Jr.'s friend. Yeah. I think that's Jason Jr.'s mom. Did you know she came today? Oh, she came. She comes every day. She comes every yeah. day. Yeah. Hey, do you want Do you want one of those uh, uh, Atlanta Five Burgers, Miss... Miss Jason Jr.? Oh, she's shaking her head. She's pointing at the rock. Yeah, well, if I've learned one well, thing she could from... fit that or pussy, she could have it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you want to? If you want to, try to put it in the pussy. She's trying right now. Wow. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ow. Ooh, she ah. has, there's a grimace there, but she is charging through it. It's like trying to slide a water balloon over... An uninflated water balloon, mind you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Over a kiwi. Well, an uninflated water balloon is just a balloon. Uh...
Oh, <laughs> oh,